Welcome to your new favorite podcast, Simply Be Sustainable. I'm your host, Brooke Chase, and I am so happy you're here to join me in living simply and being simple. Guys, today's episode, I am going to tell you what you've all been waiting for, I'm sure, how to simply declutter. I am so stoked to welcome a very special guest to today's show. She is an expert on decluttering and organizing. Her name is Nicole, and she's going to share insights on the psychological and practical benefits of decluttering, offering actionable tips and strategies for listeners to start the process. So don't go anywhere because today we are going to come out the gate with some shocking facts about you. It's like, just kidding, not about you, about your stuff your clutter, your overconsumption, your psychological baggage. Yes, we're going to go there, but don't worry. We're here to help. And we're going to talk about the methods of how to declutter, ideas and tips and tricks for how to declutter, why all of this matters. You're going to get your beer of the week, of course, and your simple swap. So we have a ton to get to. So without further ado, um, without further ado, I'm very excited to introduce you all to a professional organizer, a decluttering expert, Nicole Dillon, the founder of Planetize, and she is here to transform your clutter into clarity. Nicole has a decade of experience supporting executives and startups like Tinder and Snapchat, and she brings a very unique blend of strategic organization and sustainable systems to the table. So in our conversation, she's going to chat about the philosophy and sustainability of what it means to planetize. And hello, Nicole from Planetize. Hi, Brooke. Thank you so much for having me on today. You are so welcome. I am so pumped to have you here. Um, For those who have been with me since day one, you know that for a very short stint, a little longer than I wanted, I took a little break. Um, And that is because I was basically having a mental breakdown about this specific show. (laughs) I wanted to do a show about the kitchen and like decluttering and organizing and stocking and all the things, but I really wanted to have a guest about decluttering. And the whole time someone had introduced me to lovely Nicole here that I hadn't yet quite caught up with. And a couple of weeks into my break, I found you and finally chatted with you. And I'm like, oh my God. She's a professional declutterer. You're the human I've been looking for all along. (laughs) So I'm so excited to have you. Um, Welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. Um, All right. So I don't know. Do you know a ton about uh, like how much storage and like stuff that we have in America here? No. Funny enough, I I know nothing about storage as much as... (laughs) Sounds like you might. (laughs) Well, there's a lot of it. So first, I'm going to hit the people up with some shocking facts, as I like to do. Um, And then we are going to have you educate us all on the best way to avoid needing all of this storage. Does that sound good? Sounds great. Okay. So um, it actually started in China about 6,000 years ago is how storage began um, and somehow, uh, in about 1891, the Beckins brothers or Beacons brothers, Martin and John from Omaha, Nebraska, opened the first of several furniture warehouses for Americans who were relocating to the West. So, you know, those words back in the day that would be like, uh, they have like a dash and then like another word and a dash and another word. <laughs> So the first, the first store is called, this is all one word. I don't know. I think it's hilarious. You like the letter U, you store it, you lock it, you carry the key. And it opened its first roll up doors in Odessa, Texas in 1964. And basically from then on, people started storing their stuff. And now we have these crazy numbers. So, um, These are just like mind blowing. So honestly, like buckle up y'all. 52,786 storage facilities exist across America. Okay. That's an average of 900 per state. 
And that is an, a, that's a 23 million, million individual storage units. The amount of square footage that this is, like if you're driving, you may need to pull over because yeah. it is insane. 2.3 billion square feet. 2.3 billion. That is the equivalent of all of the McDonald's, Starbucks, Pizza Hut's, Dunkin' Donuts, and Wendy's combined. Mind-blowing. What? Think about how many of those there are. It is more than all of those combined square footage. One in 11 Americans pays an average of $91.14 a month, which equals $1,648 a year, which equals $37,904,000,000. And these are not empty storage units. They are at 90% capacity. So basically, we're still building more and more and more. And there's a staggering 155,000 storage units that get auctioned off every year. It's so much stuff that they're still going. I meant to say this stat before, but I just said it in the wrong order. 46,000 is added every year. So we have a serious problem. When we think of like the crises that we have with like homeless people, affordable housing, like that could solve it. Oh, 100%. It's a lot of it's space. Just, and so we don't want all that stuff. So Nicole, please help us. <laughs> Do my best. <laughs> it's a big challenge. <laughs> it is. So, and you know, when we talk about this, guys, like don't get overwhelmed because you can do like, you know, one drawer at a time. It's, it's whatever you can do, but we're going to, we're going to give you some tips and tricks on how to do that. Um, all right. So how did you first get into decluttering? Growing up, I don't even think that clutter or declutter were words in my vocabulary because I was very fortunate. My mom was just naturally very organized and stuff always had a home and things always were put back and being an only child, like I didn't have a lot of siblings with stuff. So I think I just naturally was raised, maybe it's in my DNA somewhere to just want to create systems at home where things live. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think when you're raised in a house that's like one way, it's kind of hard to imagine it being another way. And until you go somewhere else, you're like, you know, the first time when you go to a, a house that's like really fucking messy and you're like, oh my God, these people yeah. look like this. Yeah. And no judgment to them, like living on my own or with roommates. I'm like, oh, um, you know, I got to put in a little extra work here to, to keep up with, um, to keep it like that. How organized. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so what would you, what would you say your favorite thing is about like decluttering? Like what made you go from just like a person that knows it well to like, I want to like do this for people. I was supporting executives, CEOs, CFOs um, for pretty big companies. And you know, what I learned was like, they need a lot of help too. Like they may be super successful, but they need a lot of help. And um, I loved being in that support role and helping people create systems to make them operate better and feel mm -hmm. like they can just get stuff done. Right. Um, and I want to be able to, you know, help everyone, not just executives and you know, people who seem successful, but I, I realized that like anybody can have these challenges and, and need help just thinking a little bit better about how to run their, their space, their business. Um, yeah. Awesome. We, we wouldn't help everyone be efficient. That's what it sounds like yeah. to me. I like that. Um, yeah. So talk to me about decluttering and like the sustainability sense. The way I've, I think because of this like deep desire to be efficient, and I think I heard a Joe Rogan episode where he talked about how he thinks like humans were on this planet to just make things better. Like that's just like maybe why we exist. So mm -hmm. I think maybe we all have a little bit of that. Um, but I saw a lot of efficient inefficiencies in how people approach sustainability, like environmental sustainability. I saw that at like the offices I worked at. I think sustainability can continue itself. It's like an efficient process. Um, so when you think of the word sustainab sustainability, there's environmental sustainability that I think people don't really know what to do because there's just a lot of inefficiencies in that process. Um, mm -hmm. But it translates really well with like my passion to make things more efficient. Sustainability 
environmentalism. They have like a big need to to be more efficient and just spread education to people on how to do that better. Yeah, I love that. I know like on my very first episode, I was kind of torn when I was picking the name for the show because, you know, sustainability means two things, right? It's like being sustainable to like protect the earth's resource, but it's also to be sustainable is to like keep that same momentum in a way that you can continue to keep it up, right? So it's like, exactly. if something isn't sustainable, regardless of how sustainable it is, you're not, it's not sustainable, right? Like, so that's why I really like the word simple, because if it's simple, then it will be sustainable. And to be quite honest with you, most things that are simple are already by nature sustainable. So oh, um, I hope yeah, I totally agree with you on that. Um, tell me why decluttering is so essential and how it can benefit our lives. I could go on and on. So I want to keep it brief. But you know, from a psychological standpoint, you know, mm -hmm. like, like a decluttered space, I think I read this quote somewhere like a decluttered space leads to a decluttered mind. Mm -hmm. And I experience that every time I sit down at my desk, and it's cluttered versus clear. Um, my brain is like thinking of a thousand things when I see a thousand things versus right. when it's cleared off, I can just focus on what I need to focus on and yeah. I'm saving my time. I'm more productive. I'm living a like more Zen de like life. Um, and I just want to share that with people, that feeling of like, mm -hmm. I can get shit done today. And it shouldn't just be because, you know, I threw, I had to like, throw everything onto my bed to, right. to clear off, which I've done before, you know, I'm like, you know, I don't have time. I just have to do it. But I feel so much better when I know things are in their space and uh, I have to use so the scissors and here they are. Like, Oh my God. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I know there was a period of my life where like all my stuff was in like, like I said, some of it was in storage, some of it was in boxes, some, like it just nothing had a really a home. And it just like the anguish that that caused internally, like it takes a toll after a while. You know what I mean? Like, especially when everything had a home, like I used to play this game where it'd be like, name the most random thing. We should play this for like a second at the end of the show. Yeah. Okay. Name okay. the most random thing you can think of. And like, I'll tell you where it is. And like, it would be like, I would play this game with like a friend of mine and it would be like, try to stump me. And like, we just would like play like, for, like we thought it was so funny because we were like organized awesome. geeks. <laughs> anyway. Little nerdy um, games. I'm, I'm here yeah. for them. That's fun. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So let's get into the show. Um, let's give some people what they want. Uh, so a couple whys that I have is like, Less time looking for things, like you said, less time cleaning, less time reorganizing. Um, like, I think when I was in the very beginning stages of like my decluttering, it was like I was, I was, I was reorg, I was organizing, but I wasn't decluttering. So it was like I would take a drawer and I would organize it, but it would very oftentimes get messed up again so quickly. And so I found myself like reorganizing this drawer. And so like, I had this joke where I was like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm organizing my basement. And they're like, Brooke, you are always fucking organizing your basement. And I'm like, well, I know, but that's because like, I have so much stuff. <laughs> I wasn't getting rid of anything. Like, so I that's yeah. So we're going to talk about that. Um, really quick before we get our, into everything, because I have to try to make some money here. Uh, I'm going to talk really fast about frownies. So frownies, for those of you who are interested in having a wrinkle free forehead, which I have to say, mm -hmm. mine is looking pretty wrinkle free right now. Um, try frownies. I do not have any Botox, although I did get Botox pretty religiously for about 10 years. Um, the wrinkle patch, the original wrinkle patch brownies has been around since 1989. It doesn't give you any toxins or paralyze you or anything like that. Um, it's basically these facial stickers that, you know, teach and train your forehead to lay flat. Have you heard of brownies before? I have them in my bathroom. Oh my God, you do? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. see, and look at her forehead. Yeah. How often do you use yours? I mean, I'm pretty forgetful to to do 
self-care. That's my goal for this year. But, but yeah, I mean, I was using them for like a couple times a month just to, and I loved the feeling that when you peel it off and like the next morning, it looks pretty silly. And my fiance teases me about it, but you know, it's, it's worth it. Well, he won't be teasing you when you're my age and (laughs) you don't got no wrinkles. So he'll be like, my web is looking good. (laughs) Um, Yeah. So I just think, you know, so wrinkles are like the tension in your forehead. And to me, like when I go to sleep at night and I wear my frownies, I just feel like it like releases that tension. And I wake up feeling, you know, with a, a, it's, it's a smooth forehead for looks, but it's also because there is no tension there. Um, and so I love frownies because it's naturally training your forehead your forehead muscles to lie flat and release that tension. Um, So if you're interested in trying something that's more natural, ditch the tox and use code SIMPLE, that's S-I-M-P-L-E, for 10% off. And thank you in advance because your girl going to get 10% too. Um, All right. That is my frownies commercial. Try frownies. Go get yourself some frownies. All right. Um, So we're going to get into the methods of decluttering now. So, uh, Nicole, you go first. Tell us about Planetize. Tell us about your methods. You know, pretend I'm a client and I'm like, hey, I need to declutter. I don't know. I guess you go over their house. You go there in person. Like, just talk me. Talk me through how you declutter your method of your madness. Tell me. Yeah, I, I think like holistically kind of zooming out first, like I I love to take it a space at a time. So when I work with a client, it's usually let's tackle the kitchen or mm-hmm. the closet in your kid's ba- bedroom or whatever the area is. And I actually like clutter the space. So I, I say that you have to clutter to declutter. So I take absolutely everything out in the space. Out, and right? Everything take everything out. out. Yes. Yeah. I'll send you photos because I always take photos of it, just like pots and pans and, you know, snacks or like whatever the appliances are, everything out. I would love to see these photos. Please send me that. Yeah. And, um, and then, and that's like the, the first step, um, to, and does your client like stand there, like having a heart attack? Like I have all that shit. That's all mine. (laughs) You know, everyone's different. Some people handle it better than others, but there have been, (laughs) you know, people that it's like instant anxiety because you just it's your and it's your personal stuff too right mm-hmm. like I can come in pretty unbiased like unemotional to it because I know it's not my stuff at the end of the day right. but I but I can empathize with people who are like this is a lot this is a lot uh you know mm-hmm. um and and then I what I like to do is um is actually sort stuff first mm-hmm. um through and like and group it into different categories because Another thing I learned as an uh, executive assistant is you have like context switching. Like if you're in a role, like as an executive assistant, you're constantly context switching. You're getting random requests. You're doing a lot of different projects. You have to learn how to manage context switching or else it'll mentally drain you. And the same thing happens. What do you mean by context switching? What do you mean by that? So if I'm, if I'm thinking about like, um, I'll use it for organizing as an example. If we're going through like your your office and we're Mm -hmm. going through the papers, you have like a pile of papers and random objects, like, you know, items on your, on your desk, like, um, like flat, like glasses, no notes, like sticky notes, mail that's unopened. If you have like a bunch of stuff and it's in a pile, you may want to first just like go piece by piece and like sort and decide like, this is important or this is that. Um, or, or do I want to hold on to this thank you card from five years ago? Like, you know, it's there. I think your, your instinct is to just immediately sort through everything, but oh, you're, what's happening is right. you're first, you have to just finish getting everything in a pile, like in well, an organized I, pile. Yeah. Because, um, cause otherwise you're mentally draining yourself by thinking right. about a medical bill right. and then switching into like, Oh, this is an old to do list. Let me read through this. It's a lot okay. of mental energy. So I'm going to visualize using. each step because I have a perfect friggin' example. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I 
have all my stuff. I have a kitchen. I'm like 38, 37, however years old. And I have like all my stuff that I've been having for living on my own all this time. Right. And I moved in yeah. with my significant other who has all his stuff and everything. Right. So mm -hmm. again, all the same things I have, we all have to have pots, pans, everything we need for a kitchen. And then we also joined a household with someone else who was living in a house for like 60 some years. Right. She's 83. Yeah. So we had one kitchen and three adult humans worth of items, right? And so we had to combine them all. So in order to do that, to do exactly what you're saying, which I have the exact same theory, you have to take everything out, all of yep. it. Yeah. Because if you have, so, okay, so that's the first step. So we're in agreement on that. Yeah. And then the next everything thing else. is that you have to put the like things in piles. So for exactly. example, so mm -hmm. for example, you're saying papers, if we're talking about a kitchen, all the pots and pans go in a spot. All the silverware goes in a spot. All the spices go in a spot. All the sugar yeah. goes in a spot. Because so just to give an example, if you're going through a kitchen that isn't already organized, and then you're bringing all of these other like items into it. You might find sugar in this cabinet. You might find sugar in this cabinet. You might find sugar all Seven the way sugars. back there that somebody forgot about. You might find like, you know, it just yeah. depends on the situation, right? But they might not, if, if you're not someone that's already somewhat organized, then all of like the same things won't be together. And so I'll let you get to and the next draining. step. Yeah. Well, but the reason that that's important is because like, if you start to organize before you have all your piles, sorry, I'm getting like verklempt. Um, If you start to organize before you have your piles, you don't know how much space you need for each thing. So it's like, okay, well, if I put all the silverware over here or the Tupperware or whatever, and then you find a whole bunch more Tupperware, then that Tupperware doesn't fit in that spot anymore. So you right. have to take everything out and you have to mm -hmm. put everything the same together and you can't yep. move on to the next step until you do that. So totally keep going, keep going. Yeah. No, you've nailed it. And I think that that also shows you like what you have or what you use, or if you find a, an appliance that's been sitting in the same cardboard box it came in, like, oh. <laughs> yeah. So those are the important things to see and to combine because you might realize you have six wine openers and you don't need six wine openers, you know? Nope. And so then you can get to the, you know, the next piece. The um, next step. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, that's so the next step. Yeah. Once you've like kind of simplified it and, um, decided like, these are the things we're going to like keep, these are the things we're going to dispose of. Um, well, wait, that is the next step then. So if we take that's everything big... out, and then yeah. we have piles of everything. Now, what do we do with all these piles? We have six pots and pans. We have, what's our next step? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it depends if I'm working with clients, the mm -hmm. step of like how we decide to keep things. Like it's, it's not a cookie cutter process. It's very much like. But the next step you... then is deciding what we keep. Right. Right. Okay. So I'm yeah. just making sure we're making it clear. So step yeah, yeah, one yeah. is take everything out of the space of what you're organizing. So if it's your kitchen, yeah. take everything fucking out of the kitchen, take it out of the cabinets, take it out of the drawers, everything. Or if you're just doing the drawer, take everything out of the drawer. You could go as big right. or as small. All right. Yeah. Step two, put all the things that are the same in piles. Mm -hmm. Step three. So like you said, if you have all the wine openers, all the silverware, all the little twist ties, all the rubber bands, yeah. all the you have safety to go pins. Group by group and decide, right. yes, we're keeping and then, this. We're not keeping this. And then once you have all your piles done, there's nothing else anywhere. You have all your piles. Then you're like, all right, pick a pile and decide what you're keeping. Now, this is the part that I find to be the previous episode, what to do with it all, right? So, mm -hmm. but you're going to decide what you're going to keep. All right. So now go on. Yeah. Um, yeah. So to decide, you know, if it's not my stuff, if I'm working with a client, mm -hmm. you know, that's an, an opportunity for us to have a conversation, an honest conversation of, do you need three can openers? Do you need the, which is your favorite? Is there sentimental 
you know, value in certain things. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a, it's a negotiation sometimes. Uh, mm-hmm. It's a discussion um, to decide to make those decisions of like the yes, no. And I think you actually, because I know you have like a kind of method of like, yes, no, um, that maybe like, if you want to share kind of the deep, like how you do it at home for yourself, yeah. because with clients, it's like, it's a discussion that's not so cookie cutter. Yeah. So, all right. Um, and now I want to just be really clear with everybody and tell everybody that I am a recovering full on pack rat. And the only difference between well, I'm sure there's a lot of differences. I'll give myself a little credit, but there is a difference between like a hoarder and a pack rat. Now I'm not a hoarder, like, but I had sentimental value to everything. Okay. And I was like the type of person where I would like keep it and then like never go back into like whatever it was in. So I had like all these things full of things that weren't like gone through. But so, okay, so when I have my piles, let's just stick with the kitchen because that's what we're talking about. Um, So we have, say we have a pile of knives, right? Mm -hmm. So what I tend to do for everything, which for me personally is easy because it's like, does it spark joy? And you answer it in your head in like three seconds here, people. The answer is either yes, no, or maybe. If it's yes, put it in the yes pile. If it's no, put it in the no pile. And if it's a maybe, rock on, put it in the maybe. I'm not giving you any stress. Don't don't worry about if it's yes, no, or maybe. Just do it. You will know if you feel joy in three seconds. If you don't feel joy in three seconds, it's probably a no, but I'll give you the benefit of the doubt and it might be a maybe. Now, with that can be all those other things. Like, is it sentimental? Maybe like your grandmother gave you that spoon. I'm not getting rid of that spoon because my grandmother's not here anymore and I'm going to keep that spoon. It's only a spoon and I don't care. So I'll keep it. It sparks joy. But is it also like multifunctional, right? Like maybe it sparks joy, but it's like serves no purpose. And then like once you get to the end of it all and you realize that you have all these things that spark joy, like I don't know. It's easier with some things, but like, at least when you do yes, no, maybe you're in a whole different place because let's just say you're talking about can openers, right? And you have four can openers. One can opener doesn't work. One can opener works really good. And the other two are like cute, but they don't really work. So keep one cute one and keep the one that works great. And then you don't need the rest. Like at least then if you go from four can openers to two, you've reduced your inventory by 50%. Personally, I would just be like, I only have one, but we're trying to take baby steps here. Yeah. And you have to also account for like, you know, are, are you with a family? Do you have, do you live with roommates? Like, are there more mm-hmm. people using it? You know, because you also don't want to have to then like, scale down to one thing and then it breaks or something right. or someone loses, you know, someone takes it, you know, to the a right. friend's house and forgets to take it back. It's always good. Like, it's okay. If you have the space for extra things, it's fine. Well, and it just does it need to occupy, occupy that space? Can it go in like back stock or storage? So, you know, you have it. Yes. So it doesn't live in your kitchen because you only need one at a time. Yes. Like and I think this space that you have is like the key thing because like for me, for example, for the kitchen that I have right now, I have a very, very small kitchen and it goes up rather than like wide and I'm kind of short. So it's like, I can only reach the top, the top shelf of my kitchen, but I need to reach my cups, my plates and my whatever. So I got one of those like riser things and like the majority of everything that I need is right there but I have more up one more shelf. So it's like, first you figure out after you go through your piles, like what you want to keep and what you don't. Um, and I'm going to get into the, what you don't it's in that other episode that I did too. Um, but we'll touch on it quickly here, but the space is key because that really guides you and how much yes you can honestly have. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. Okay. So you have your piles, you go through, like, let's just use that method. Like, does it spark joy? Yes, no, maybe. Um, And then, so if it's, 
if it's a no, then you can use my previous episode to talk, to figure out what you're going to do with it. Like, are you going to donate it? Is it something that you can maybe gift? Like, is it something that somebody else would really like to have? Maybe it's like a pair of jeans that you love that doesn't really fit you or a top or whatever. Um, is it something that you can donate? Um, or is it something that's garbage or recycling? And if it is garbage, is there a place other than the landfill that you could put it? And again, like my episode before this is a great guide for that. Um, now if you are going through your stuff, I just have a couple like really quick ways that you can kind of decide if like, if it's something for me, like these aren't really options. Cause I'm going to do the method that we just gave, but some questions that you can accurate, ask yourself if you're having trouble with the spark joy is. If you were to purchase this, like, would you purchase it today? Like, would you buy it now? And if you wouldn't, then that's a pretty good indicator that you're not going to, you don't need it. Because if you wouldn't buy it now, why would you, you know what I mean? Um, I thought this was a funny one. Would you call an ex to get it back? Like, do you need it that much that you would do that? Which I guess it depends on the situation. <laughs> um, <laughs> the hanger trick in your closet, which is like, uh, you know, you turn the hangers one way and then when you wear it, you turn it the other way. Um, I sometimes instead of that will push like clothes that I'm questionable to a certain side just because I'm too OCD to have my hangers other ways. Um, I've seen the tape trick where it's like you put a piece of tape on everything and then after you use it and take the tape off and then if you haven't used it and the tape's on it, then you don't need it. Um, but yeah, those are a couple a couple of those things. All right. So what's next? So we've gotten rid of this stuff that we don't want. Now what? This, I think this is where the planetized stuff comes in, right? Isn't this when like you put it in a certain spot with like the flow? Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's all kind of part of the process, right? Like kind of clutter to declutter, um, get creative in how you want to store things and put things back. Um, mm -hmm. once you decide like your, your piles, yes, no, maybe, um, mm -hmm. or is it going to live somewhere else, you know, get creative with like how you want to store it. If you mm -hmm. don't do, like, I think we talked about this. You don't need like the sexy containers. You can, mm -mm. Re you can use stuff you have, like maybe you exactly. have exactly things like that. How can we get to that point? Um, and then let me give the a leftover quick let me give a quick oh, yeah. example of that. Okay. So like yeah. I said, I moved, I moved in this house and it's, it's, it's not really small, but it's very narrow. So any place that I have is just small. Like the spot is really small. So when I moved here, I had a, a bathroom that had no shelves and I don't have a lot of stuff, but I have some things and I had mm -hmm. nowhere to put it. It was just like all on the floor. And I'm like crying, like, wow, what have I done? I, how am I ever going to how am I ever going to live my life here? <laughs> um, and then I was like, okay, we just need a place to put it. Right. So I got shelves. So my towels mm -hmm. go on my shelves. Like you just have to find solutions for the problems that you have. Um, and I had, I got one of those like racks, like skinny little racks that fit. I measured it obviously. And it goes in between like the, the bathroom and the or the toilet and the shower. It's only a space this big, but it has three shelves, but I wanted it to like look cute. So I'm like, I now have mm -hmm. like hard, like, what am I going to do? So I had these, a cute little tote that says like, I don't know, exfoliate, love more. I don't know. It's like a cute thing. I think it says something like sustainable probably because I'm a dork, but it's like <laughs> a cute tote and I wasn't even using it, but I always thought it was a cute tote. So I just put like all the stuff that I would put on that top shelf in the tote and then put the tote on the thing. And then now it's like, whenever I want to have like a spa day, grab my tote and I give myself a facial. Yeah. So you just have to like think about like, because the point is that you, uh, you customize the, the stuff to the space, mm -hmm. not the other way around. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I love it. Go on. Um, and then, and then, yeah, then we talked about this and I know you have another episode of like how to dispose with like intention. Cause mm -hmm. I think that's also kind of where we bring in the sustainability of like, let's not just dump it in the trash. If it's, mm -hmm. if it's something that it does have some kind of value where like some other outlets that we can explore for it to go, where else could it live outside of this home and outside of the landfill? Um, which is like another area to get creative too. Or can you re-gift it? Like that's another kind of fun thing. Um, I love that, that we like to consider. 
Um, Absolutely. And, and I, I have, I, yeah, uh, just really quick. So like when yeah, I do okay. this, right. So I I'll do this like for a room, you know, cause there's maintenance mm -hmm. maintenance. Like once you are already like living this way, you're still going to like accumulate stuff. Right. Um, yeah. and so I'll go through and I'll have like three piles. One will be like, this doesn't go in this room. Like it just needs to go in whatever home it is, but it's not in this room. I don't want this anymore. So I'm going to like donate it, whatever. Or like, I think this would be a great gift for somebody. And I have like one of those like TJ Maxx bags where like, mm -hmm. I'll just put all the stuff in there. And then it's either like for somebody specifically, or like when I need a gift, like say it's, I don't know. I'm trying to think of an example, but sometimes I just buy like random gifts. Yeah. I was going to say yeah. a candle, but if it's already lit, I probably wouldn't. Um, oh, yeah, not a used else. candle, but I feel like right. Like if somebody that, gave like, me a candle that I didn't necessarily yeah. like care greatly for the fragrance of it, or um, you know, if somebody gave me sweet red wine, like I'm never going to drink that, or if somebody gave me like a type of clothing or a scarf or something that I wasn't necessarily going to probably wear, you know, I would put that yeah. in that bag. I'm not going to necessarily donate it or get rid of it because it's new, but I would, you know, maybe use that as like something that I could re-gift to somebody else. Yeah. I know like um, reusable bags are becoming a pain point for us because you accumulate so many, right? Like you're trying not to use plastic bags and then all of a sudden you have like reusable bags and now you're like, do I need like 16 reusable bags? Like we don't. Um, so that's also an area, like when we go to donate stuff, because we don't really have plastic or paper bags, like we, because we are pretty mindful of using reusable, mm -hmm. we'll just take our least favorite or worn down reusable bags, put the clothes in there and then take that to, to drop off. Um, or, you know, if there's a nice one that doesn't mean much to us, but you know, it's a good size. We'll put gifts in that instead of a gift bag, you know? And so I think it's just getting creative. Like that's like right. where you can just really with what you have and what your life is serving you, like your lifestyle. Um, there's just, it's a, it's fun. It's like fun problems to, to it, see what you it can It really use. is. And honestly, that brings us a great segue to the simple swap. So the simple swap this week is going to be basically taking things that you already have, which to me, an Amazon, a box that you get from Amazon, like, let's just be real. Everybody uses Amazon. You know, it comes in boxes. They're doing a way better job these days of like not using boxes, which shout out to Amazon. But, um, you don't always have to like recycle those boxes. Like what can may maybe some of those boxes you can use to organize, right? So like if you get a smaller box, you can cut the top off or fold the tops in and then like organize your sock drawer, like put mm -hmm. your little ped socks in there, your bigger socks can go like, you don't need like some fancy schmancy plastic, whatever in your drawer when you can just use things that you already have. Um, and like, you can also take the tops of those, like you can cut boxes and then cut slits. And like, I know if, unless you're watching on YouTube, you can't see my hands, but like you can do this yeah. <laughs> and then you can make like custom design thing, like drawer organizers. So my swimple, my swimple, my swimple, swap. <laughs> my swimple swap is for you guys to take those Amazon boxes and just like put them to good organizational use rather than like trying to go buy all these, you know, crazy plastic expensive whatevers that you do or don't need. Um, so that's the simple swap of the week. And a pro tip, you know, you, can you hear that? Do you keep hearing a, a ding? Yeah, no? Yeah. You do hear it? Yeah. That's but, really annoying. Yeah, I thought Sorry. it was just in my head. <laughs> no, it's me. I have to figure out how to get rid of that. Um, so you if you want them to like look pretty, um, you could also, you know, wrap them in like pretty paper or, you know, whatever. And I know somebody gave me one time a box that they wrapped, like what they had the lid that came on and off. Um, which wouldn't necessarily be an Amazon box, but like a shoe box. And then I had that like for a really long time that I kept photos in. So 
you know, even though it is made of paper, there are a lot of sturdy boxes that can be reused for quite a long time. Um, we don't necessarily have to go straight to the recycle bin with these boxes. So just totally. another little pro Pinterest tip is a good space to also get creative. Mm -hmm. It really is. That's fun. Yeah. Um, so in, in lieu of all of this, I feel like I kind of need a beer. But unfortunately, or fortunately, mm -hmm. I'm doing dry January. So that will bring us to our beer of the week, which um, this week is a Heineken Zero. <laughs> um, which I have to say, they're lovely. Like, I might honestly switch a good portion of my beverage choices to some, like, just, I'm kind of like a connoisseur. Like, I like to, that's why I like beers, because I like to try, like, so many new beers. Um I, I drank like non-alcoholic wine this weekend and I haven't found a non-alcoholic wine that actually tastes like wine. So that's why my vote went to the Heineken Zero because it was just like, so I go to Run Club on Thursdays and then we get like beers afterwards. Mm. And it was just like such a riff. Have you ever had a Heineken Zero? No. <laughs> well, I encourage you to give one a try because it was like, crisp and light and refreshing and I just it was very enjoyable so that's the beer of the week um what else we got here all right so let's recap so first we're gonna take everything out then we're gonna group everything together then we're gonna decide what we want and you can use any of the methods that we gave you on deciding that but like, it's like, does it spark joy? Do you need it? You know, yes, no, maybe basically. And then if it's a no, you know, can you donate it? Can you re-gift it? Can you upcycle it? Can you fix it? Um, and then what else? Oh, you know what else I want to talk about? What about like some quick tips for staying organized? Do you have any of those? Because I have a couple of those. Like once you're all decluttered, but now you're like mm -hmm. living, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're living, yeah. you come home, you got your purse, you got your bag, mm -hmm. you got your stuff. Like how do you help us like stay organized? Do you have any tips for that? To stay organized? Yeah, like quick um, tips, I'm, hacks. Yeah, like I think that you need to have, um, like everything needs to have a home. So that's like the biggest tip I can get. If you have something, Give it a home. And then that way you always know where it needs to go. Yes. In, in terms like of your keys. Yeah. Keys go on keys, a hook. Hand bag. Yeah. Yeah. Poop bags for the dog. Like everything. Yes. Everything has a home. So for me, like I like to keep stuff. And I know this is like part of like what, uh, what Nicole does when she talks about like getting things in a flow and it's like, how often do you use it? And, you know, you put that low and foremost and easily accessible versus like in the back where you have to mess up the whole drawer to get to it when you need it every day. Right. Um, but mm -hmm. so for me, like little things like having like a catch all on the counter, like a basket um, in the kitchen, you know, on the Island, you know, you don't want a junk drawer per se, but it's like, if you have a place where things that maybe have a home, but you just didn't get to put them there yet can go in there. And then you consistently like put that stuff where it goes. Um, I think that that's a good way to like, I, I mean, I guess because for me, it's kind of like a cheat because I'm not the most like put it back right this second kind of person, but I am like, put it away. Like, I don't want everything. You know what I mean? So like, I have like a basket that has like my sunglasses, like if I grab some mail and like whatever I needed, like receipts, like it's just kind of like a catch all. So they're not all over the counter. They're in the basket. So I like, mm -hmm. I, I'm a big fan of baskets and bowls. Yeah. Um, that's a tip that I have. Anything else you want to recap on of, of your processes? Um. I think we did a good job hitting, hitting kind of all the pieces to it. Um, you know, there's like so many ways to dive deep into it. So mm -hmm. I think just going into it with like, you're making sure you're like in the right mindset when you go to do it and you're really yeah. mindful of your energy 
because as soon as you start getting overwhelmed or, you know, feel like it's too much stuff and then you can't get through the organizing process. Right. Then it's not sustainable mess, <laughs> then you or simple. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So just be, be real with your, with your mindset going into to that, if, especially if you're doing it by yourself. I love that. Um, yeah. So just remember that, you know, alone we do so little, but together we do so much. And, you know, our excessive overconsumption and clutter contributes to more than just too much stuff and too much stress. Um, that we're creating environmental consequences that eventually do cause like resource depletion and all that negative stuff that I try not to get too much into. Um, but it is like a true fact. And that's why we're doing this show so that we can try to make this world a better place. Um, so we make a way bigger impact if everyone did sustainability imperfectly rather than a few people doing sustainability perfectly. Um, and so I just want to remind everyone where to find you, Nicole, if they want to follow you on Instagram or hire you, where do they go? Yeah. Uh, go to Instagram at hello planetize at spelled like planet. And then I Z E, um, and uh, on Pinterest as well. Um, you can go to planetize.org uh, to go to the website and book some time. But, yeah, that's it. Awesome. Oh, and I wanted to tell everybody about this post I found. There is another girl that does something similar to what you do. Her name is Noelle. Oh, I lost it on here. Oh, it's called um, at there's room to breathe. Her name is Noelle Fowler and she talks about stories that we tell ourselves. Um, and one of the things is like, you know, what if I need it or if I spent too much money and it's just kind of like changing the story that we tell ourselves to allow ourselves to let go of it. Mm. Um, and I thought that that was really nice. So you guys could check her out on Instagram. If you're like, you're struggling with all this stuff, like, you know, psychologically, um, I thought that she had some really good content surrounding that. Um, so forgive yourself. It's okay to let it go. Um, and some other resources is obviously, uh, Marie Kondo is a great one. Um, and I'm going to have some links in show notes. If you guys want to do a little bit deeper of a dive, dive, a little bit deeper of a dive on all this. So, um, thank you all so, so much for joining us. I can't tell you how much it means to have you all here. Um, I know this was a little bit longer of a show, so I'm super, especially grateful if y'all stayed on the whole time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again. Um, and we will talk to you next week. Next week, we are going to talk about a capsule wardrobe. So like when you declutter your closet and you only keep your favorite things, how you can make lots of new fresh outfits and maybe pick a couple new things to tie them all together. So that's what we're going to talk about next week. All right. Thank you guys so much. Simply be. Stop.